Okay, in this video we're going to be taking the Eclipse IDE with JBoss running in it and we're going to be creating a new Eclipse project and then showing how to expose that project as a set of web services that we can then go and consume using FireMonkey to produce cross-platform clients. Okay, so we'll just go off and we'll go and create a new project. So we'll just go File, New, we want to create a dynamic web project. I'm going to give it a name and I'm just going to call it Temperature because this is going to be a very simple project which just allows us to do some conversions between our different temperature scales. We should then be able to leave the rest as the default. So we just go to the default location in my workspace. We've got our target runtime there, just make sure it's set to JBoss 7. We can leave the rest as it is. One thing that might be quite nice to do is just check the box to say add project to an EAR file, which is an enterprise archive file, and that just keeps things a bit simpler for deployment time. Other than that, I'm just going to take all the defaults, go through to the end, and say finish. Now, for this very simple one, I'm just going to expand it out and go through to the Java resources and to the source folder, which obviously is empty as we haven't added anything in there. And just to save you watching my painfully slow typing, I've just got a simple little Java file that we're going to drag and drop in there. We now go in, expand that out. We can go and have a look at the, the Java code, which is very, very simple. It's just a, a single class, which has got um, two methods defined on it. One converts from Celsius to Fahrenheit, and the other one from Fahrenheit to Celsius. What we can now do is just use this as a base to look at how we can expose that in a format that can be um, consumed by the FireMonkey application. So there's probably several ways we could do that, but a, a quite an easy way of doing it with, um, with Java methods is to actually make them available as web services. And by having the JBoss tools installed into the Eclipse IDE, it actually automates an awful lot of that for us. One thing you might just want to have a look at is if you look at the web content at the moment, you can see we've got our meta info and our web info folder structures. By using the JBoss tools to actually create some web services, it will automatically generate a WSDL structure for us and associated WSDL files. So just go down here towards the bottom of the context menu, create web services. It'll take it just a second or two to bring up a dialog for us. Oh, there we go. And again, you can take all the defaults here. Just make sure it is pointing to your JBoss application server 7 runtime. Go through next. Here we can see the two methods it's identified in our piece of Java code. We'll say, yeah, let's do both of those. It's now going through and it's creating some bits. In order to do that, it does need some functionality on the JBoss server. So it's just going to go through and start up the server itself. And that's completed, so now we can just hit the Finish button. And if we go and have a look down in our web content folder now, you can see we've got a WSDL structure and we've actually got a WSDL file as well. And we kind of look at that in the source view where you can see it's basically the standard uh, layout that we'd expect. And there's also a nice little designer that we can look at and actually add to it within the Eclipse IDE as well. But that WSDL file is really the, the link now as we can take that and import it into uh, Rad Studio IDE and then look at how we can work with the WSDL file. So you can see here within the, the IDE, we can also hover over the actual service, service or converter service, and it'll tell us the actual URL that's been exposed onto. Start up a browser. So that's now talking to our uh, converter service. So if we do a WSDL. There's the actual WSTL file itself. So we can access it that way, obviously, on our, our local host here, where we say this, this virtual machine. Obviously, if you're looking to access it from another machine where, you, where your RAD Studio is installed, you'll need to um, remove local host and actually put in the, uh, the host name of it there. So here we are in the RAD Studio IDE, and I'm just going to go File, New, and choose a FireMonkey HD application. Using the File, New, Other option now, we can find under Web Services, a WSDL importer and if we paste into the URL the URL of the WSDL document we can tell it to automatically soap version and we'll just keep the standard defaults by hitting finish it's going to create for us a pass file which has got connection to the, um, the service and the functions in there so if we scroll down we can see here we've got a get converter which returns us an interface to the converter and the converter interface defines the two functions that are exposed on the Java server ready for us to code to. And on this project I've simply added a couple of spin boxes and on the spin box we've set the value type to be float because conversion between the temperatures may not always be a round number. We've set a, a couple of buttons Underneath the buttons, we're literally implementing the, the call to get the converter and then calling the function and returning the value back into the opposites field. And then we're updating the screen to show the conversion that we've just done. And if we now pop in, say, 50 Fahrenheit, and we use the Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion, 
we can see that comes out at 10 Celsius and we get confirmation of what we've just done. So let's try changing the Celsius to say 17 and we can see that works out at 62.6 .6 degrees Fahrenheit. We can come into our project and add a platform and we're going to add in OS X. Okay, now we've got the Mac target added. We can build our application and run it, which is going to deploy it now over to the Mac. We can now see we haven't made any change to the code. We literally just recompiled. And we now have a Mac version of our application running. And here we're able to do the same thing. So let's try 80 degrees Fahrenheit now. And we can see that conversion running back through.